what we're going to be looking at here is a call option as a derivative. That's where its value depends on the market price of some common stock and it's used in speculation here. So what are we talking about with a call option? Well that gives you the right to buy some stock in the future here at a specified preset price here and we call that the strike price here. And what you're trying to do here with this call option here is you want to buy the stock at a low strike price here and you want to sell it at the high market price. So so this call option gives you the right here to buy the stock at this preset price and then you can turn around and sell it at the market price to earn some money. Now all these call options are broken down into two elements here. They have the intrinsic value here and the time value here and we're going to uh, deal with both of these when we're recording this call option here. So the intrinsic value that's really the market price here at the time versus the st strike or that preset price here. And that we're going to be looking at the change here in our intrinsic value here. And then the time value. Well, that's in a market appraisal. And really, it's the options fair value is greater than zero here. And uh, that is determined by some financial modeling. So uh, modeling to determine what this uh, time value element is in the call option. So that we have to look at and have to be given that value here. And then uh, this time value, that's also the expectation that the prices of the shares here will increase above the strike price. So again, the idea here is to pay for this call option here and that gives you the right to buy the stock say we hope that we can buy the stock at the low strike price and then we hope that the price of that stock goes up here and then we can sell it at the higher market price. Okay so let's look at our example here and we're going to be looking at here uh, starting out with 815x1 here. This is where Corporation A uh, purchases a call option here on Corporation B's common stock. And what they would do here with this call option they're going to pay $360,000 or $360 for it. So what that uh, this option gives them is the right to buy Corporation B's stock in the future here. And uh, what you have with these options, you have a notational value. That's the number of shares that you have the right to buy here. And in this case, uh, uh, Corp A here is a right to buy 400 shares here of Corporation B stock. And then we also have that option price, and that's really the strike price. That's the price that you can exercise this option on, or you can purchase those shares at, and that's $40 here per share. And then again, our option expires here. There has to be an expiration date, and that's 131x2 here. So what we're going to be given here for our problem, we're going to have some market price, the shares here, and we're going to be looking at the share uh, market price here from uh, for, through a, a series of dates here, and then the time value, the option, what that option is worth here. So what we want to look at here is at the purchase date here at 815x1 when the option was purchased the strike price is $40 per share and uh, the market price is also $40 per share so the uh, everything on those when we have that option the it's broken down between the intrinsic value and the time value everything goes into the time value of the option here that's what the call option is worth that's at the purchase date only because the market price equals the strike price so strike price and market price are equal the value of the option is all into the time value the intrinsic value is zero that's the only point I'm trying to make here okay so let's go up and let's look at how we have to deal with this option how do we would record this here on our balance sheet and on our income statement so what we have to do here we ha have to uh, first lay out our problem here so you're going to have some dates of activity here you're going to start with your purchase date or the uh, purchase when you purchase the option here and then we're going to look at some activities up through the settlement of the option that's when that option is ex going to be exercised here and what we have to do is we have to deal with the that what we talked about that intrinsic value of the um, option here and also the time value of the call option here. So what we're going to be doing is looking at the change uh, between periods for each of these here. And based on those changes for each of these elements here, the intrinsic element here, which is the market price less the R versus the uh, strike price here, and, uh, and for our time, which is the time value of the option, we're going to go and we're going to be recording those changes here in our what we set up as a call option account here for that Corp B stock. And this call option account here is an asset account. And we're going to be looking at 
any increases and decreases in this call option. And what we do here, when you enter your uh, when you make your entry here for a call option here any increases or decreases they're going to go and be recognized as unrealized holding gains or losses on the income statement here so let's just start out with our pro problem here to look at what we're dealing with here so when we purchased this call option we paid three hundred and sixty dollars for it so cash credit that for 360 and then for your call option you would debit that here for $360. Okay so the next thing we have to deal with is these these pe periods of changes so you see what's going on here. Uh, okay our strike price here uh, at 815 was $40 and we're going to look at our next period here where the market price here has gone up to $8 or up to $48. So comparing our strike to our market price you can see we have $8 and change uh, changed of $8 here per share here changes on a per share basis. So what we would do here we're going to have a plus change here or an increase in our intrinsic value here. So we go down here and we would Record that here for debit our call option here for $3,200 for the intrinsic portion. That's that $8 increase here uh, per share times 400 shares. So we recognize unrealized holding gains, gain and loss here of $3,200. So we've taken care of our intrinsic portion here for the that first period here. So now for our time value, well, it's gone down. And we started out with 360 and then at that our date here, it's gone down to $180. So we have a decrease here of $180. So going down to our call option account, this a decrease reduces the call option here. So credit that for um, $180 again for the time value portion and then uh, unrealized holding gain. Well, we have a loss here of $180. So that takes uh, that was how we take care of our intrinsic and our time portions for the first period but let's go and look at this thirty two hundred dollars we skipped over that here how that how what that actually means here so on nine thirty the price increased to forty eight dollars per share so you can exercise the call option and the purchase of 400 shares of stock for $40 per share here and then you can sell uh, the stock at the market price of $48 per share so we're just taking our $48 market price less our strike price here $40 so that gives us a difference here of eight dollars per share times the 400 shares that we have this option on that's going to give us a thirty two hundred dollar gain so that's where we got our thirty two hundred dollars in here so that increases our call option here because our market price increased here by eight dollars per share and then again we recognize that as an unrealized holding gain here on our as income on our income statement here for thirty two hundred dollars so just looking at our next period here well we've gone down here for market and we look at it from a period to period basis here so you have to look at it in those terms here so we've started out with forty eight dollars we've gone down to forty six dollars so we've had a loss of two dollars per share here and then a time value also gone down you can see it had gone down from 180 to 65 dollars so that we lost 115 dollars here total amount here so going down here for our call option or intrinsic value we would debit or credit that or reduce it here by 800 dollars here so that's really the two dollar decrease per share here times those 400 shares and then again unrealized holding gain here uh, debit that here for $800. So I, I know how highest holding loss here for $800. And then the time value portion, that's just the dollar amount here. That was that $115 here, the reduction from 180 to 65 here. So credit or reduce our call option here for 115 unrealized holding gain a loss here 115 the 180 minus the $65. That's just the value of the time value portion here. And then just looking at our last uh, count here where we had we were at forty six dollars per share and we went up to forty seven dollars per share so we had an increase of one dollars per share and then our time portion went down from sixty five to thirty so thirty five dollars uh, total amount here so time uh, uh, the intrinsic value we would have increased that here by four hundred dollars because we had an increase here of from forty six to forty seven dollars or one dollar per share so there it is that was one dollar times the four hundred shares here so there you would credit your unrealized holding gain in this case here by four hundred dollars our call option here 
increase that by $400. And then the time portion, that was went down by $34, $35 here. So reduce your call option amount here by $35. And then you recognize that unrealized holding loss here for $35. So what you're, you're noting here through our example here, this call option, we have to keep track of it for both the time value portion and the intrinsic value portion here. So you look at our changes here when we, and you look from period to period or from what, what it, from one period to the other period to make your adjustments to your call option. Any uh, uh, increases in the uh, market price here, increase the call option based on the number of shares that you can purchase and any decreases in the market price here reduced your call option for the intrinsic portion. And then for the time value portion, you can see that it, it's losing value over time here. So that is reducing the call option portion here. And then at your at the last date here when this option is settled. So what you have to do here in that case to determine any unreal, or in this case it's going to be a realized gain here. What you have to do is just sum up your debits and your credits here in your call option. And in this case we've done that and we come up with a sum total here after netting out our debits and our credits. We come up with a debit amount here of $2,830. That's in our call option account and what we're going to do at the settlement date we're going to close out this call option account here we had a debit of 2830 here so we're going to credit it out here for 2830 and what you're going to see here is this we're going to have a realized gain i'm showing the unrealized holding gain and loss account here but it's actually going to be a realized gain here uh, unrealized loss excuse me here for 30 dollars well how do we figure that out here so what we do here at the settlement date, this is the cash we're going to get paid here. And then that's based on the fact that the market price here is $47 per share. Our strike price was $40 per share times those 400 shares that we have an option on here. That's going to equal $2,800. So on the settle date, in this case, since our market price here uh, greater than our strike price, the difference here times the number of shares is $2,800. That's at the settlement date. So we debit or increase our cash here for $2,800. And then our credit here, we had, a, a, we had a credit here. We have to close that out here for $2,830. So the difference simply goes to an unrealized loss here of $30. So we have a debit here. Uh, and that's a realized, excuse me, a realized loss here of $30. So debit of $30 here plus our debit here to cash that we received here of $2,800 equals our credit amount here of $2,830. So just remember, you remove the call option off your balance sheet here, and then you recognize any gains or losses. In this case, it was a loss here as a realized loss, in this case, a realized gain or loss here on your income statement, and then you record your cash receipts upon exercising the option. If we didn't exercise the option, then there wouldn't have been any cash receipts, and then it would have to be figured on that basis. Okay, again, this realized loss here, let's just go down and look at it here. That was the $2,830. That was our sum total here, netting out our debits and credits and our call option here at that settlement date here. That was the $2,830. The $2,800 here, that was the cash we received um, for exercising this call option here. So the difference here gave us a realized loss here of $30 since we received less cash here than what we had in our call option account. But let's go down and look at it in real terms here. This That's only realized loss here is only for accounting purposes. But in effect, we made out pretty good on this here because uh, the fact here you only paid $360 for the option and you uh, were able to sell it here, those stocks, or exercise it, uh, uh, strike price versus market price, and you had $2,800 cash received. So uh, looking at this effect of the call option contract on net income here. So I'm just looking at our three dates that we have here, and what you have to look at is your transactions. That's in that call option account here. Any increases, subtract out, and that would be the credits to your call option accounts, and any decreases for the um, 
for that particular period here. Uh, you net those out and those are going to get your income and loss effect here. In this case we had a plus $3,020 here for our, our income and increase here and then the next period here well we had two reductions here to our call option account here. Market price went down on the uh, stock and we also had the uh, time value portion we had to account for. So we had a reduction here in 915 and then at the settlement date here we had to take care of it. The call uh, stock price went up and then we had the uh, time value here that we had to account for. And then we also have to account for the uh, difference here on that settlement date between the cash receipts here and the balance in our call option account. So we had a net effect uh, increase of $335. So on our total net income and looking at it over those three periods here, we actually had an increase here of $2,440. But that's how you would record it in your based on your net income based on your this uh, this call option here where you have to deal with both the intrinsic value here which is really the market versus the strike price and then also that time value portion here which is based on some financial financial modeling okay so that'll take care of our discussion here on a call option just remember here which what, what you want to do with the call option is you want to uh, buy the if the you're hoping that the market price of the stock goes up. You're going to pay something for the option here or the option to buy the stock. You're going to hope that the market price of the stock goes up based on the strike price here. And then when it does, uh, you would sell the stock at that market price and then you'd get the difference between the strike price in the market price and the number of shares or the notational value here uh, of the call option times of the number of shares that's going to give you any gain or loss and you hope that it's going to go up in value okay so that'll summarize our discussion here on call option uh, as a speculative instrument